son. <laughs> Me again, what's good, bro? <laughs> what's going on? We're back. We're back, man. When's the last video? Two years? Was the last video two years ago? Is it Mine. Two? I feel like it was less than two years. 18 months, maybe? Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. <sighs> How you been, bro? Fucking yeah. hell. <laughs> from, from, from shoe studio to freaking. Now we're in a warehouse, <laughs> we change locations, but no. It's been interesting, actually. Um, if I do a recap of what I've been doing for the last 18 months, it's been. First, there was a learning part. Remember when we had the video um, in London Sneaker School? It was everything around just sort of learning, trying to expand, trying to not box my mind or my yeah. creativity in terms of like, you know, there was the whole question around, you know, am I doing shoes today? Are we doing clothes? But I think since then we've progressed. I've been focusing really on just building strong relationships, really understanding the fashion space in terms of what does production look like? What are some of the constraints? Um, how to get in, how to navigate that space. Um, just sort of looking at, you know, really looking within myself to, to sort of challenge my creativity. I feel like, I don't know if every other designer gets to this point, but I've just, you know, I, I, it's like a journey and there's days, there's good and bad days. There's sort of high days, low days where I feel like I'm not doing enough. And I feel like in the last 18 months, it's really just been about perfecting the actual skill, my tailoring, my design sort of eye, and then working with other people like yourself and other creatives to sort of fill the gaps and expand on some of those other areas that I can't quite get into. So it's just been grafted, man. And yeah. then obviously I think fashion, one of the things for me a lot of people don't talk about enough is just how expensive and, you know, the cost, you know, what it actually means on ground daily running either a fashion dream or a fashion business, right. you know, just, just fabric and, and, and everything that involves production. And I feel like it would be interesting to sort of see what other people do in terms of how they raise capital to push that dream because for me it's still you know it, it's it's still sort of growing so it needs that funding um, yeah and yeah i've just been trying to sort of do everything else to keep that sort of momentum but yeah bro that's me yeah because it, it's i think a lot of people when they get into fashion which is good it should be about the creativity first and then the finance stuff is very important because at the end of the day once you become a creative you don't want to be exploited like yeah. there's a lot of big designers who get exploited yeah like they sign deals with like all these big brands yeah. the brands take all their ideas yeah. and don't compensate them properly for it yeah um and yeah i don't think it's something like you're saying i don't think it's something that people consider like how expensive the whole fashion thing is like if you're a designer like from the fabrics to even if you're going to sew everything yourself, which isn't really feasible at scale, sewing everything yourself, now you've got to maintain your sewing machines and your needle, your needle and thread yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. It's so expensive. Expensive, complex. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, initially when, when I first started, you know, I remember clearly my thing was, <laughs> my thing was, yo, I try to be self-sufficient. I want to learn this, 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 so I can... It just doesn't work. Yeah. And I don't even know if I would advise myself to take that approach if I could do things again. I think there is so much, you just don't have enough bandwidth. So I feel like the next question is finding and building a team, finding people that you've got the right sort of vibe with, people you connect with, and just being able to work in, you know, similar to what we do in an open space, yeah. as transparent as possible. I find that so difficult in this space. I feel like the creative world is so, and, and, and everyone is busy doing something else. So right. it's almost like, how do you, I mean, today was a good example. <laughs> today, today did not go according to plan. We had a whole fucking plan and, <laughs> you know, we had all these conversations, but I feel like the beauty is how we just, we pick it up and we just go with the flow and we're able to sort of, you know, kind of just dance to that tune and make things work. But I find it difficult, to be honest. I don't, I don't think it's the easiest of things. I can see why a lot of people start fashion projects now and things they, they it sort of gets abandoned and also for me it's all about profitability because the last thing i want to do is we're spending all this time and money and it's actually not going anywhere or we're not actually making enough and it's so I, you know i deleted my instagram recently or, or disabled it yeah. because it just got to a point where for me anyway instagram is when you're ready when you're chilling and you want to yeah. you want to show all the good stuff you're doing I'm not, we're not there yet, I'm not yeah. there yet, certainly. So there's still so much grind that isn't cute and isn't quite fun to show. And it was a chance to just take a step back and look at things in my own head because 
I'm not here to be celebrating, you know, small wins here, but yeah, that's cool, but you know, we're trying to get to it. So for me, it was just sort of right, I need to, because I felt like sometimes just having been online pushed me to just do something small just so you can kind of, you know, and it, it really is bigger than that. So I've taken a step back, you know, I'm working on the funding. Um, yeah. I'm not going to talk around too much on some of the heat. We've got, <laughs> we've got some heat coming as always, but it, it's really now moving to that next level and that requires quite a huge sum for me, which at the moment I can't generate from just focusing on fashion. So we'll work on a number of things to try and raise that capital, get a bit of structure in place and then move things forward. But, you know, I've been working on my skates. <laughs> you know, He's learning to skate. Yeah, I've been yeah. skating, you know, just picking up like just everything else that keeps me in the right mindset, that keeps me going um, and, and focusing a lot on meeting new people and just sort of understanding the space more in navigation. Yeah, I think, I think we're kind of lucky though, because I mean, living in London, you can meet so many creatives so quickly. And that is, we do have an advantage compared to like, if you live, I don't know, somewhere remote in England or yeah. even in any country to be fair. Yeah. Um, like London is a fashion capital of the yeah. world. So we're kind of lucky in that way. But going back to what you said, like profitability is so important <laughs> because there's this thing, and I think Americans are better than us at yes. this yeah. when it comes to like making money because I think the culture in America, I don't know why, Sometimes it can go too far, but to some extent, yeah. they are always still trying to see how they can make something profitable. Yeah. Whereas in England, we have this whole thing of like, the, the artist who was so amazing and he, he died poor and all that stuff. We're not trying to do that. No, like, no. I feel like you can balance both where you can be profitable, you can make a profitable business, but also be very passionate about what you're doing and the brand you have or the business you have. And I think that's a big thing that I don't like in the UK. Like we have this culture of like this starving artist sort of vibe. I don't know where, you know where do you think that comes from? You know from? what it is? I think for me in the UK, I've always struggled to talk about money. Um, you know, taking a step back to corporate days, getting a contract as a PM and the recruiter goes, oh, so what's your day rate or what are you expecting? There's, there's always this fear if I say, what I, the amounts I really feel like I'm worth, they'll go and just hire somebody else. Right. So I've always felt like, and, and you see that a lot here, and, and you can test this, ask someone you know, what's your yearly salary? <laughs> Most people will tell you. Um, I think because we're reserved and we have that kind of culture, when it comes to money, if we then take this ideology to the fashion world with collabs and brands, there's a million brands, there's brands everywhere, you know, everywhere Literally. I turn, there's a new brand. My question now is, guys, how many of these brands are actually generating real profit? And I, when I say profit, I'm talking not breaking even. I'm saying you spend 50 pounds to do a small collection and you made 150, 100 bucks in your pocket. You know, I, I, I don't know. Again, because of how shy we are and reserved when it comes to finances, it's very easy to just be posting a lot of cool stuff on Instagram. But it's between you and God if you're not making any money. And yeah, but do you think because um, is that kind of part of the issue? Because if people don't talk about money in the UK, then in fashion, never gonna... then no one's going to know whether they need to improve or not. So like, if people are willing to talk to each other about like how their businesses run, all these sort of things, Pitfalls, if, if you realise that, oh, I could have done that and made my business profitable, that would help you. But because we're all just so silent yeah. about money, yeah. especially in the UK, yeah. versus like someone like America. Yeah. I feel like it works to our detriment. Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. I mean, like, you know, I, I was in LA in April, April, and just being there, there's just, they, they, there seems to be more of an openness to talk about, hey, what's your name, bro? I like what you're doing. When are you free? Let's chop it up. It's so open. And, you know, for me, those conversations always involve what are we getting? Even if we're not talking about money, like, you know, are we gonna get a favor today? Do I like owe you or, you know, whatever. Just, I find here, there's a lot of conversations on collaborations, which is great, but there's never transparency on what, what am I getting out of this? Right, and right. I respect people's time. As a creative, like literally all we have is time. We might not have the most money in the world, but I, if I've spent eight hours sewing a pair of jeans, bro, I'm gonna, you know, like that time for me is valuable. So. I feel like I, I'm taking my own example and anytime I work with creatives, I'm always trying to be as transparent in terms of what are we doing? 
who's doing what, roles and responsibilities, and you know, what are you gonna get if I, you know, and I always try and be open and say, well, this is how much I have, bro, what do you think? Are you cool with that? Because I just feel like it encourages people to, even if we're friends, at least when there's some sort of terms in place, it just, you get that professionalism that you might have not had if it's just free, 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 and yeah. things can sort of start getting messy, but it's a, it's a, it's a learning point. And I think we've had this conversation before in our group voices of fashion around, just being a bit more, the fashion industry definitely needs to be more open in terms of pitfalls, um, um, profitability, yep. and how, what that, because it's a whole different world of calculating, you know, what are the projections, we've got these couple of hoodies or these suits, we're, you know, just, I want a bit more on that area yeah. and not just glossy, glossy, and the glossy is cool, but it gets serious quite quick for me anyway, because I've been spending a lot of time. <laughs> Do you I reckon though that, that like, it's what I thought as you were talking was like, maybe a lot of high fashion brands have to hide that, because mm. if it looks like they're struggling in any way, it's going to take away like from the luxury of the brand, Bro, you know, which is why they have to hold on to this idea that they're perfect uh, sort of thing. This is the thing with fashion and you know, from like, this is the love-hate relationship I have with fashion. There's a huge gloss part of fashion which is attractive, which is amazing, and which it needs to be fashion. But at the same time, when you're sort of trying to be an entrepreneur in that space and spend your money and time, I feel like to be well informed helps you for tomorrow because gloss doesn't always put food on the table. We right. need to have a sensible conversation on the infrastructure, um, resource, how do we, how are we able to do production as cost effective and sustainable as possible and what is our strategy on how we take that across whether it's custom or whether it's you're trying to target a brand in terms of having your um, your clothing in that you know store so there's still a lot of work to do but for me I think I'm trying to that you know my, my I'm very self-taught I've learned pretty much everything I know in this space by just figuring it out trial and error people, and, yeah. often, you know trial and error fall get up and um, like I said it, it just got to that point where it would make sense to take take two steps back look at it make sure you cross the i dot the t's and you know i then have to obviously make sure i've got the momentum and the funding to then come back and really sort of get it to a point that i'm comfortable with so yeah it's a work in progress yeah i mean everything's expensive like i've told you like my plans like yeah. literally so i launched my magazine which well, luckily uh, was really <laughs> was really it went get really that well bag. <laughs> <laughs> the the print copies are sold out but you can still get the digital version um, but now I want to like expand because I realize like, yeah. and this goes back to finding a way to be profitable but not selling your soul. Yeah. And I realize that a lot of magazines, the reason why they become bad, for lack of a better wor word, is because they realize, oh, we need to make more profit. Yeah. And then they get advertisers and then they get advertisers that don't really flow with the magazine and or then the they sort of lose or... their integrity a bit. Yeah. Um, so, the model I'm thinking of is like 032C, which I was telling you about, which yeah. they, it's like a magazine, but it's also a brand because they are stocked in like some of the big stockiest, like places like even, I think they're stocked in like Dover Street Market and okay. those type of places. Okay. Um, so it's like a standalone brand, but it's also associated with the magazine. Yeah. And that brand funds a lot of what they do with the magazine to where it can still be a very underground mag. Obviously they get big designers in it too, and they can just kind of do whatever they want. Yeah. I don't feel now like Vogue can do whatever they want because it's so commercial and there's so, there's so much pressure to like make money. Yeah. And I feel like because like Vogue, I can't, is there any Vogue clothing? There might be merch, but no one buys it. I don't see anyone wearing it. I don't even know. Honestly, for me, when I hear Vogue now, and this is with all love and respect, it's just, it, it's become such an iconic name that I don't know, it's almost like being too far from the tree. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's, that's cool, that's one way of doing things, but I think most of us like to still keep our hands dirty and be on the ground. Yeah. And I love what you did in your magazine because, you know, it just, I think I've known you for a while and we knew you were going in that direction, but we didn't know how you were going to do it, you know, and, and you did it and, you know, well done, all that hard work, everything you've been able to sort of piece it all together and bring it together as a body of project and put it out there. And yeah, it's just the first, it's just the start, bro. So yeah, well yeah, done. Thanks. Damn. But it's just, it's just complicated. Like even, so I was looking into like, if I was to make a brand, which I'm going to for the magazine, yeah. like, 
what are the logistics of it, like how much is it going to cost at factory, sampling, getting designs made, tech packs. Yeah. And when I thought about it, I was like, before I even start, I'm spending at least the minimum £20,000. So hold on, let me, let me ask you a couple of questions. So give, give us a very quick rundown of high level cost. Um, I know you just said 20, but yeah. may, maybe go into a bit more detail on creating a magazine or what, what, what's the effort, what kind of yeah. team and what kind of money are we talking about? Yeah. And guys, this is where for me, this is why I keep talking about <laughs> all about the money, man. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's important. before it's important. we even get to the magazine point, you've got to get that cash ready to fund this before it even becomes a thing. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so wow, it was really hard logistically because I don't ever want to be those magazines that doesn't pay people. Mm -hmm. So I had to pay, like, I can say I paid every single writer wow. that worked on the magazine. How many did you have, roughly? So I had about four other writers. Yeah, so there's that cost. And I think I paid some, it was depending on word count. So some I paid 150, some I paid 200, some I paid 300. It just depends on like, how many words they wrote. Yeah. Um, so that's the cost. I think in total, like when I add all the costs of like what I paid writers, probably yeah. like a thousand pounds. So there's that. And then there was like photography. So even though I did take a lot of the pictures myself, I shot them on film. Right. And obviously the film itself, I'd show it on um, Kodak Portrait 400. Okay. Which in film roles, <laughs> <laughs> in uh, film roles, I probably spent in total maybe like 60 pounds okay. and then developing film maybe right. another 140 okay so now i've already spent what 1200 okay and then i'm trying to think of what other costs i had well i had to travel to do certain shoots so right. i added that to my wow. tax so bro this is legit yeah. man Full. so, how, so how did you <laughs> did they teach is this part of your curriculum at school just no like, i you have to you, learn these things you had to learn the yeah whole like, i had to just think about i sat down for like a week and thought what are all the things that could possibly be like an expense yeah and i made like an excel spreadsheet right of like all the costs that could possibly happen and like how it's going how i'm going to manage it and this what my budget management. is project yeah management. So that's, so it's expensive yeah. for a magazine. And then obviously um, printing was expensive because I wanted my magazine to be a premium magazine. So it's like hardcover. The pages are like 250 GSM, so it's like really thick. Um, and it cost me a lot. It cost me like, it like 14 pounds each to print each magazine. And I sold it for like 40. So when you factor in the cost of like, how much I paid the writers and how much I paid this person and like, cost of it like shipping materials quick. it stacks up quick cool. and then i think my profit per magazine was maybe like four pounds when everything was said and done so it's so funny because like when you price something for 40 pounds people think oh so he sold 500 so he's it's sold out banking. he's <laughs> bank this guy's rich and it's like no oh. and the most expensive cost i can say was shipping right so with my next magazine I'm like speaking to people that I know like run big businesses right. and asking them like, how do you do your shipping? How is it profitable? And I found that the way I did it was not cost effective right. at all, right. which is good because now I've learned. Yeah. So how, I'm going to have a better scared, profit margin. How scared and, or nervous were you just around launch and just like the success, everything? I mean, this is like, and this is the thing for me, guys, like this is, this is a real ninja type of behavior where you've never done something yeah you might be in that space or people see you as the guy but there's a whole freaking difference with being cute and taking pictures and trying to come across as the guy for something than doing the actual work and we yeah. coming back in a few weeks and saying so how's that stuff going yeah and you know so what what was it like for you launch dates you know the day you launch maybe a couple of days after nerves fear you know and it seems like there's been a whole bunch of learning you you've sort of just a taken lot of on, learning you know for the next and, and for me that is the power of just this space being fearless and having people around you to push you and challenge you and say bro just do it man and, and go for it yeah you know so i think that's great yeah i'd, I'd say i was definitely scared mm. because the thing is your like, names to that stuff yeah, man because, <laughs> well my name's attached to it for one yeah. and two is like i don't expect people to like buy a product i bring i release my thing is like forget the whole youtube audience or whatever 
like I have to make a product that's good enough that people will buy it, whether they like me or support me or so whatever. So it to sell itself, basically. Yeah. It's on so it there is. was stress in that, and then there's also stress in like I've put like thousands of pounds into this project. Yeah. So if it doesn't sell, I'm going to be the one that suffers financially. Basically, it's you. <laughs> so that's why it's so important to talk about money because people don't like to do it, but it's the reality. This because is what if I spend ten thousand pounds on a magazine. And I don't even break even. I'm going to be the one suffering yeah. for it. Yeah, and, and and in the UK, as I know it, and, and don't quote me, guys, but this is just my experience, honestly. And I'm talking experience in the corporate space, fashion. People don't want to talk about money. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't want to talk yeah. about money. You know, everybody wants to talk about the collab. You know, let's do. But no, no, no. <laughs> that's cool. But and let's just talk. Okay, so even if you don't pay me today, this. The outcome of this, if it goes somewhere, you get some money, are you gonna pay me then? It's just those sorts of things. And I feel like this is a great example on for you, uh, you know, and hopefully people will see this and watch this and reach out and just start thinking more about the cost and penciling some of these like expenses down. How much is it? You know, even if it's a pound, it's two pounds, so important it adds for up, like, every you know, creative because everything that you do is that's creative will cost money. It will cost you money. And for me, I was always like, I'm always budget heavy because from from just my like what I do, you know, project management is all about budget. It's all about how much are these three resources going to cost us to build this website? If it's going to be three grand, can we get it for two? Right. You know, everybody wants to get it cheap. Obviously, not to the detriment yeah. of the quality, but. If you don't talk about money, then how are we even gonna? And what people don't realize is like, so I obviously have a day job because like you, <laughs> because people think like, well, like you have, <laughs> yeah, we have to talk about because people think, oh, you have seventy thousand subscribers, this guy must be rich. Not really, like because one, it's the integrity thing. I don't work with, I get sponsorship deals like every day, but I can't just take anything. I get all sorts of weird stuff like people are like promote my teddy bear. I'll pay you like one thousand to promote my teddy bear. I'm like, why would people just think who's this sellout? Why is he promoting a teddy bear? <laughs> so I see money pass me by all the time. Yeah. But like YouTube videos itself, I think for every video I make, the average is like what twenty five pounds. So I'm like, this is, a, this is fucking amazing because I don't. I'm not around on yeah. YouTube. I don't know how much you YouTube. Yeah. And the fact that you're here just telling us. No, but people have to know. I don't, I'm not scared of telling that's, people that's, how much I earn. That's what I like about yeah. your, your way of working because that for me is the real learning. You're, you're, you're at least helping people who are in this space who don't have, because I, I don't have a clue about how much people are on YouTube. Yeah. Know. And it's just good that you, you're, we know that's what you're doing. You share it. I think that's the Yeah. Because I think like sometimes people think like, so when you launch like, Someone like me launches a magazine, it's like some get rich quick scheme. <laughs> <laughs> and I've told you, like, all I got was like four pounds profit per magazine. And the thing is, I want to get to the point where, like, the stuff I create, yeah. like, so the magazine and the brand that I'm going to create yeah. attached to the magazine, yeah. will make enough profit to where I can just live off that. Yeah. And then my life becomes the magazine. And literally, all I can do now is just focus on, like, finding new creatives, yeah. going to these underground places Strategy, and finding new creatives boom, and boom. all that sort of stuff. And that's going to even reflect in my content being better or the magazine being better. So like people intrinsically, if you're supporting the stuff I do, yeah. you're supporting like the future of the business essentially. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, that's why it's just crazy. Cause I don't know, maybe people think like, when they have this perception that this guy has 70,000 subscribers, he must be rich. This guy's just trying to make money. <laughs> it's really not like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's, because I've had people say that, which is why it's funny. Well, you know, and, and that's the thing. I think that's what a lot of people feed off in this industry because there's a lot of uh, perception and people just let people think what they want to think. But the reality is not a lot of people are willing to um, be as open as transparent and put themselves out there and say, well, this is exactly where we are. This is where we're trying to get to. And these are the steps and these are some of the challenges we're having. I feel like the more these, you know, the, just what you're doing with your platform, bro, from when I met you like two years ago to where you are now, it's just phenomenal. It's so inspirational because for me, I remember when I went on YouTube and I saw you and I was like, okay, this guy's, he's, he's spitting game. Let me, <laughs> let me see, you know, and for me, that is, that, was, that probably, all those things, probably if, even if I don't think about, influenced me too, because it was just so relatable seeing another black Nigerian bro spitting fire bars, talking about, 
you know, tell us real fashion history, an era <laughs> that I feel like a lot of people just gloss over, which sort of sometimes almost makes it feel a bit too... Like almost like there's no substance. It, like superficial. Fashion is, fashion is not. Fashion is such yeah. a technical, scientific, mm. artistic space. There's so much that goes into it, and I feel like people just focus on whether it's the catwalk. And I'm not trying to, like I say, this or down. This is all respectfully, but I like more of a 360 type of approach. Right. You know, that's just me. I and that's like me as well because I get. Um, so for my channel, I feel like there's people that come for different things. Yeah. Because I'm actually interested in every aspect of fashion. So. Yeah. In the past, I've made videos reviewing runway shows. At yeah. the same time, I've made videos um, talking about like the business, Sorry. how the business, like business reports, and talking about that, or like the business of a certain brand, yeah. or like a business deal that's happened. And like it's almost like random. Like yeah. I feel like people don't even know what it's, to expect it's like from school. my channel. It's like no, I love yeah. it honestly. Like I feel like you're doing such a great job. I've had, you know, from the first interview, we talk about this all the time. You know, from the first. Uh, <laughs> uh, sit down we had you know we had such great feedback with a lot of people reaching out uh, talking about how they appreciate just the content and our experience and how we brought that energy into this space which for me I feel like it's different out of I probably would have never gotten into fashion if I hadn't built my career and got into a point where I was comfortable so that I could fund right. this dream right. and turn it into something right. bigger and I feel like it's that sort of block piece that is missing in terms of people being mm. as honest as possible in terms of look right now okay so we're working on fashion or this creative project but you know in terms of funding the nine to five is still going or we're doing this a lot of people want to seem like they've made it already when they might not be quite there um, and there isn't that sort of love and enjoyment that comes. I love the process of this stuff because Same. when I look at where the hell I am now and I think back three years ago, I'm like, whew. <laughs> I know three years ago, were, I, if you told me I would be here, I would be like, you know, so it's that kind of measuring your progress. And, you know, I see that sort of energy in you as well, which I think is just, yeah. Yeah. I'm here for all that, bro. Um, 